Hi, my name is Tony and in this video I'll show you you don't need to be a shoemaker to make something like this. All right? All you need to do is follow this very easy tutorial. Let's start with what you need, okay? A little bit of leather, of course, and um, I recommend something soft I will wrap around your foot nicely. This is 4 ounces Crone Town leather, which I line with fabric. Okay, I'll show you how I did that a bit later. For the bottom of the shoe though, you will need something heavier, maybe 8, 9, 10 ounces of vegetable town leather or something similar that's stiff and rather thick. You're also going to need some eyelets, about 50 of them, all right, for the shoelaces and the optional vent holes right here. What else? Yeah, well, you're also going to need the soles, okay? Now listen, no matter if you repurpose an old pair or you buy new ones, I'll show you a bit later how to adapt the pattern to work with whatever sole you can get your hands on, okay? And lastly, of course, you're going to need a pattern. I'm going to leave a link down in the video description where you can get the pattern for these shoes, okay? And uh, even the soles, I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link for the soles as well. And uh, some of the tools, I recommend um, everything there if you want to use the same ones I do. So now that you have everything you need, Let's open the pattern and see what's all the fuss about. The PDF file has more than 150 pages, so maybe only print the size you want to make. Most human sizes are included, so just pick yours and print the pages you need at actual size. You might also want to print the test page and make sure the real sizes are correct before you start. The PDF will also contain a page like this. Print it and place your foot inside to make sure the size you want is actually the size you printed. After you made absolutely sure everything checks out, you can start with the build. But remember earlier when I told you I'm going to show you how to adapt the pattern to your own soles? Let me show you exactly what I meant. First thing you do is use masking tape and a pen to get the exact shape of the inside of the sole you're gonna use. Make sure it's a perfect fit before we move on to the next step. Next, print the pattern closest to your size and grab this piece. Now, in the video, it only has one row of stitching holes, but the pattern will actually have two stitching rows around like that. Now, center the custom piece you just made on top of the printed pattern just like i'm doing here know that the two shapes are different in a few spots and that's okay that's what we're doing this to adapt the pattern to the one you have next draw a stitching line to about three millimeters from the edge and mark the stitching holes like i'm doing here with a pen now don't add any don't leave any out it's very important the same number of holes is used if you cannot see the holes clearly use your phone's flashlight like i'm doing here next peel off the custom pattern piece you've just made 
or just cut it off like I did and use this piece instead of the one included with your pattern. And then of course, hold on to it. We're gonna need to flip this piece later and use it for the other foot. Moving on, only for this piece, I recommend you use some very heavy stiff leather. Like I said, eight, nine, 10 ounces of vegetable tan will be best if you have it. Now, punch the stitching holes and carefully cut the leather out so we can continue with the next step. When you are done with this particular piece, it should fit perfectly inside the sole. Okay, time to move on to the body of the shoe and uh, I show you how to line it as well, all right? Fabric or soft leather, whatever you choose, this is how you do it.
Now it's a good time to set the eyelets for the shoelaces, okay? And also the vent holes. Okay, so as you can see, ain't nothing to it, but when lining, you should really be careful about a few things if you want a professional look. One, when you apply the glue, make sure it reaches out all the way to the edge and it's applied uniformly all over. Two, when you cut the leather after the glue dries, use a very sharp blade that goes all the way through the fabric in very clean light. And lastly, to finish off, I strongly recommend a stitch close to the edge, like I will do next, all right? And a couple of edge paint, very important. Okay, now I have every piece of leather I'll need for this shoe. Remember to make the vent holes on each of the inside piece, especially if you're gonna use leather in your construction, all right? This particular bit is actually optional and uh, you can replace it with some soft padding for extra comfort. One more thing, note, I lined every single piece of leather with fabric except the, the bottom and this little strap right here. But remember when I said you should stitch the leather close to the edge when you line it? Let's go ahead and do that next. Don't forget these two extra stitches right here, which are mostly for decoration. When we have both sides pieces ready, let's attach them at the back right here. Now, pay close attention. If your leather is thick enough, at least four ounces, you can do a cross stitch first and then use this long strip to cover it afterwards. But you can uh, forget the cross stitch and simply use this strip to connect the two with the saddle stitch on each side. Up to you. I'm gonna cross stitch because I like the extra work. Thank you very much.
because of the design the back of the shoe will follow the shape of your feet in a very natural and comfortable way now remember that optional bit here at the bottom next i'm going to use glue and then stitch it in place using the inside stitching line quick tip leather glue holds better if you run some sandpaper on top of both surfaces before you apply the glue so you know get some very rough 80 or 100 grit sandpaper in and, and just have at it Great job so far. Now let's attach the main body to the bottom, starting from the center at the back here. Easy saddle stitch. Start from the back towards the front and make sure to tighten the thread very well as you go along.
When you get to this point, leave the threads as they are and do the same on the opposite side. Okay, a very important piece on uh, this construction is this boomerang shaped piece of leather right here. We will need to add it to the stitch by overlapping two holes on each side. This is very important and please watch my fingers if anything isn't clear. When you reach the other side of the boomerang piece here, it will overlap with the other side uh, on two holes as well, just like it did when you started the stitch. When finished, close all the four threads on the outside like I'm doing here. Remember earlier when we used a sandpaper before we applied the glue? Now again, here where the 
uh, leather sinks into the sole. So grab a scratch owl or a needle and carefully mark the edge like I'm doing here. Next, even more carefully, scratch the surface of the leather under the line, okay? Take your time, do not rush this. You don't want to scratch the leather above the line and get permanent marks on your shoe. Now, apply cement glue where the leather will meet the rubber, where you just scratched it with sandpaper. Here is a pro tip for you. Get some nail remover that has acetone in it and rub the soles with it about 15 minutes before you apply the glue. It will make the bond much stronger. After you apply glue all over, get a heat gun or a hair dryer and heat up the glue just for a few seconds before you attach the sole to the shoe. Be patient and let the shoe dry for a few hours or even a day, depending on the particular glue you used. After the glue dried and the bond is strong, we will stitch the top part to the sole all around here, okay? Now, most soles will have this stitching whole line marked about four centimeters from the top. Let me show you how I use a compass and an owl to make the holes next. I recommend thread at least one millimeter thick for this stitch to avoid cutting through the rubber when you tighten it, all right? So one millimeter, one, even 1.2 millimeter thread will work best. Oh yeah, the spacing between the holes, at least eight or nine millimeters. Once you get at the front here, I want you to stop. I, I want you to stop a little bit and just appreciate how easy it is to complete the stitch. Due to the fact that this particular piece right here will be attached the last, leaving your fingers enough room to maneuver and your eyes a clear view of what you are doing.
Once this stitch is finished, attach the last piece right here at the front. Don't forget first to uh, finish this stitch below. I also want you to appreciate just how easy uh, it will be to take this design and customize it even further. You can add different pieces to it, uh, you can add tooling, you can really make this shoe your own, okay? Personally, all I had to do to make these sneakers unique was to flip the front piece right here and expose the lining on the outside. Look at this, instant win, you have to admit. Now, I absolutely love the results and uh, I don't think I'll ever spend any more money on sneakers from now on because I'll just make my own and uh, I'm pretty sure these will never break, all right? Anyway, thank you, thank you all for watching. Remember, I left links to the pattern in the video description below. And if you like this tutorial, click, click that subscribe button. So next time we publish another video, you won't miss out. Peace. Come on.